Hey everybody, this is Rich. Welcome back to the channel. I am getting ready to start tiling the niche area uh, where we want to do some sort of an accent tile. So we will be installing a glass mosaic pattern in the shower niche. So because the mosaic tile is um, in the shape of some flowers and it's very thin glass tile, I want to go ahead and lay out a pattern before I actually mix up any thin set. Just going to make things go a lot more smoothly to lay down. And, and if I need to make any cuts to the glass tiles, I can do that now and not have to stop while uh, the thin set is on the walls. This is the, the glass mosaic that we're using, and I basically made a mock-up of the niche area with some sheets of large paper. I, I'm basically doing it so I can understand where I need to um, cut pieces of the flower and potentially cut some pieces of the petals um, if I need to. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and open up the glass mosaics and lay them out, lay the full pieces out, and then start filling in uh, the gaps with, with um, some components of the, of the pattern. Let's go ahead and get started and lay it out, and uh, so that way I have exactly all the pieces that I need before I need to actually thin set it on the wall, and this will go a whole lot faster when I'm ready to do it. In case you're interested, I'm using a Viviano marble tie mosaic, and it is called the GLA Blue Mosaic, uh, Blue Lotus Mosaic, and the SKU number. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay out these big pieces. So I've got all the pieces that I want to lay out. I just need to make cuts right here and on the sides. And then these pieces here, these leftovers, I can make them fit in these blank areas that are right here. I probably only need like one or two pieces of this. So I think the next step is to go ahead and cut this, cut these tiles out and um, be ready to start laying some tile. So a couple of tips to uh, help you cut mosaic tiles. You can do two methods of being able to mark um, the areas in which you need to cut. Now I will either, A, I'll use either like a Crayola type marker, which is easily washable. If I'm going to mark directly on the tile, I'll use this one. And then what I'll do to be able to see the line that I've made is I'll put packing tape over top of where I want to make my mark. That way I can actually see the mark itself to be able to cut it um, easily. Uh, because this is so washable and that the wet saw, it'll end up, uh, the, the marking will end up getting removed if you just try to cut it without putting anything over top of it. Um, and the tape actually keeps it flat and not from moving around, but it also protects the marking itself. Or you can use a masking tape, which, you know, is your preference. And then you can go with a Sharpie marker over top of it. And once this dries, it stays uh, visible when you're cutting on the wet saw. So now that I've got the tape on here and I have my mark, I can go ahead and make my cut. And another item that I, I ended up using with these really thin ones because they tend to want to bounce around and you can't get good clean cuts is to take a piece of uh, scrap wood and lay it up against really right near the blade, uh, right near where you're going to make the cut and just kind of hold it down so that it has, it's firmly against the table. So 
So now I've got my my cut here, and then you can pull the tape off fairly easily. And you can see the cut is pretty clean for a glass tile. Okay, I'm back from making cuts, so let's try and lay this out the way it needs to be. Um, maybe this is over here. No, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> it's going to be tough to figure out now. So, I think we got kind of how we want it. <clears throat> and I've given myself kind of like uh, about a quarter of an inch of gap around the border. Uh, because glass expands and contracts a whole lot more than porcelain or ceramic tile. So you want to give yourself enough um, space, especially in the corners. So the next step now is to go ahead and mix up some thin set and start uh, placing these mosaics on that wall. Another thing you need to keep in mind when tiling with glass tiles is that you need to use something that's specifically designed for a glass or mosaic tile um, and something like this Mape uh, thin set that's here. This is the Atosilex P10. And this has two certifications for the ANSI codes. So you have to know where you're going to use this to understand whether or not you can use it with water or if you wanted to put, need to put the additive in there. Uh, because I'm putting it in a shower and it's going over a liquid membrane, I need to put the additive in there. I'm planning on mixing um, just a portion of this bag um, simply because I know that the area that I'm going to be um, tiling is a very small area. So I, I'm planning on, I think, just doing a quarter of this. A good way to be able to do portion sizing of, of these things, obviously if you have 10 pounds, a quarter of it is two and a half. It's pretty easy math in terms of that. Um, but the way to actually do it is I actually got one of these, um, essentially this is a, a Samsonite uh, weight for when you travel for your um, travel bags to make sure that they're you know under 50 pounds when you travel uh, on an airplane. Uh, but it just gives you a sense of what the weight of, of your bags are. And it's a really good measurement tool to understand the weight of this bag and how much you've poured out into your bucket. So for example, I'm gonna be mixing it in this old uh, uh, spackling sheetrock mud bucket because uh, I just have it available and it's small enough to, to make the mix that I need. Um, but you can pour out your, your liquid Caraply, put it in here, hook this up, turn it on, and it's really sensitive to the weight of what you have. So yeah, like here it says 0.19 pounds. So you can subtract the weight of this with the, the weight of that so that you know exactly how much you've added to it. Because these, uh, these thin sets and these uh, mixtures are very sensitive to how much you put in. And having something like this to be able to measure this stuff out really makes it a whole lot easier for you to do the right amount of material uh, so that you mix the correct portions of, of, the, of the thin set. Okay, so the thin sets had uh, about five minutes, six minutes to, uh, to slake, so we just need to mix it up again and uh, it'll be ready to go. <coughs> So I've got that and I've got some towels down just to make sure I don't get anything on the tile and I also have a clean bucket of water with a sponge to wipe off any excess when I have it. The other thing that I've got is three different trowels that I'm going to be using potentially. Uh, so the first one I got is a 16th by, a 16th by 16th and then I have an 8th by 8th square notch trowel and then I also have a, um, a 3 16th by quarter inch v-notch trowel in case it 
uh, just doesn't get the coverage that I need. I'm going with the thinnest first to see if I get enough coverage on the wall because you want to make sure you get at least 95% uh, coverage since it's in a shower. You want to have good coverage. So I don't want it to ooze out around the sides of the, the mosaic tile because it's so thin that you, um, you want to be able to grout over top of it. So if you ooze a lot of it and it, so it's only an eighth inch thick that uh, potentially you don't have any area to grout. So we're going to go with the smallest one first. Um, hopefully that's enough to get decent coverage. If not, we'll go with the 8 by 8 So as I'm putting it on, I'm basically having to touch just about every one of these little tiles to make sure that they all get good contact. Because uh, you can't really s slide it around. Um, and just as a word of note, these are not very translucent in terms of glasses, uh, glass tiles. So I'm not really worried about these ridges, but if you had a, 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 a very translucent glass, these ridges would show up in the background, so you'd want to skim, knock all those ridges down and make it really flat. <clears throat> but this is not an issue for this particular tile, so I'm not necessarily worried about it too much. have these single ones like this you want to um, try and back butter them a little bit uh, just to make sure you get good contact so as I started putting it on it looks like I, <clears throat> I evidently I shifted it a little bit somehow from my mock-up and it started shifting upwards, it's in an angle this way. So it started getting difficult to, I had to cut these pieces off and cut these pieces off. Um, and I had to add pieces to the bottom because it was kind of shifting upwards. And I'm also getting a little bit, it's a little wide. So I'm having to cut the edges of these pieces off to, uh, able to fit the width of the wall here. Alright, so here is the completed mosaic uh, niche. Uh, I don't want to touch it anymore. I cleaned it off a little bit with a sponge just to wipe up any extra pieces. Um, and at this point, I just want to let it set up. I think I got pretty good coverage. 
I may have, I mean, the 1 16th might have been a little bit light because uh, I did notice a few places where it was coming away from it. So um, I didn't want to peel it all the way off and start from scratch. Uh, hopefully I got enough coverage on most of the places. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm pleased with it. Just to give you a sense of how much mortar I ended up using with that 1 16th trowel, I mixed up two and a half pounds of the mortar and I still have probably a, a pound and a half left. Uh, so I didn't maybe use but one pound. It goes pretty far when you're using these little thin, thin mosaic tiles. So I think this is going to do it for this particular video. If you have any questions or comments about what I did here, uh, please put them in the comments section below. I'm happy to answer your questions, and I'll look forward to the next video. I'll see you all later. All right.